Hi, it's James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to look at Look at the Stars. This is going to be published by Pandasaurus Games, and it's a 2-8 to eight player game where you're going to be drawing constellations on your night sky and trying to score the most points by the end of the game. Let's go ahead down to the table here, and I'm going to show you how to play Look at the Stars. <music> All right, so this is Look at the Stars. And the components that you're gonna get in the game here, you're gonna get eight different uh, night sky boards here. You're gonna get 30 night cards here, and you're gonna get 19 bonus cards here. You'll get eight dry and erase markers here, and these are gonna be chalk markers, which are really cool. And you're going to uh, get eight wipes here. So each player could get a wipe and a dry erase marker. Now, there's going to be a lot of these to pick from when you start up the game here. So you just can either randomly assign them or let people pick them. And this game can play up to eight players. So you can see that these are slightly different uh, each board here. So you'll get your card. You're getting your night sky board. All right, so then we're going to go into the rest of the setup. What you're going to do is you're going to shuffle these night cards here. And we're going to put them into three piles of six. So we'll have one, two three, four, five, six, and we're gonna do that for three piles. Now the remainder of these cards, you're gonna put back in the box uh, so that you will notice that there is a good amount of cards uh, left over that don't get played in this game. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, variety on what actually uh, comes out each game. So you have a lot of replayability. So you're not gonna see all the cards, the night cards that could be there. You're only gonna see this set of three sixes. All right, the last part of setup here is you're going to shuffle up these bonus cards and put two out to play in the game. Uh, these bonus cards here are going to be uh, what you're going to be aiming for throughout the game here uh, to uh, get your points and game scoring here. Now there's going to be two cards here uh, that they recommend you start with. Uh, I believe this one here is the first one. And your other one is going to be the bear, this one right here. So these are the two that they recommend starting with. But after that, you would normally just shuffle this up and place two out. And now these ones have these two backs on them. So the way this works here is you're going to flip this over and I have this set of this back and this set of this back. Shuffle these up and I would take the top card from this deck and the top card from this deck and those would be my bonuses. So I'm not going to have two of these star cards uh, I'll have one, one well, I guess they're both stars but I would have one from this deck and one from that deck and that's how you get your bonuses out and that's all there is to game setup all right so let's get into how you're going to play this game well this game is going to go over three rounds here and go until all these cards are flipped and you're going to be drawing on your nighttime board as time goes by you're going to be trying to aim to get these bonus points right here if I every time I get this by the end of the game I'll get three points this one here if I ever complete this I get to do a bonus action like right here I will get be able to uh, draw an extra line somewhere if I want and there's a couple other ones in here um, like this one here I can draw a galaxy on there uh, so there's all sorts of different bonuses I can uh, do for this side but these are me so these are immediate bonuses and these are uh, going to be bonuses at the end or points at the end of the game so it does recommend that you start with these two and at the end of the rule book it does explain each of these different types of immediate bonuses you can get during the game so what are you going to do well throughout the game here we're going to flip these cards over and when we have these cards you can turn them any way you want but you can't do the reverse this is a bad example here uh, but some of them like this, uh, if I flip it like this, I could do everything but that way. So I can't, re I can't reverse it, but I could do any of those other directions and draw them. And you're going to draw them on your board. Now you can't connect planets with this, uh, so you can't touch planets, but you're going to basically like this one here, I'll place like this and like this. A couple other rules that you're going to have when you're writing these out is you can't overlap uh, a line you've already drawn, but you can connect or intersect with any lines that are already there, and you're trying to make constellations for end game scoring in here. One really important thing here is you're going to be looking for adjacency on here, and with adjacency, the rule is the two objects are considered adjacent. If they're 
placed next to each other orthogonally or diagonally. So you have to keep that in mind for the scoring that you could get with these planets and other things. So you're going to keep flipping these cards over here and everybody's going to draw them on their board. Once one of these stacks run out, you will notice there's this little uh, arrow here and that line from here down will become unavailable. So the sun is rising and I can't actually draw anything in this area. Once this duck runs out, I will lose the uh, bottom four sections here and I won't be able to draw in those either. So the night sky becomes smaller and smaller as the game goes by. So you have to keep that in mind as you're playing and you may want to draw some down in these lower sections in here so that you don't run out of room before the game ends. Now a interesting card that can flip and there's three of them in the deck is going to be shooting stars. These shooting stars uh, you could draw out and there will be one, two, or three lines uh, on this board here. Uh, once all these cards have flipped, you're going to end the game. When you end the game, you're going to do final scoring here. You're going to look on your board here and you're going to try to score constellations. Now constellations need to be groupings of stars here that you've drawn lines through. And you can only score a size of a constellation once. So what does that mean? Well, if you look at your little board here, you can mark off which ones you got. So a three constellation is the smallest constellation you can possibly have. If you have that on your board, you can mark this that you have it. Uh, now, if you have multiples, it doesn't matter. Do you have one with four on there? Then you can mark this one. If you have one with eight, you can mark this one here. It doesn't matter if you have four eights. If you have one with eight, you could mark it off. After you do that, you're gonna add this up. So if I had all three of these, I would have 7, 15, and I would put 15 points here. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to get points for however many constellations are next to the planet. So on this board here, I have one, I have one here, so I have two, two points. Then you're going to look at your shooting star, and you're going to see how many of those you did. Now, you can have up to three of those in a game. Uh, each shooting star awards you one point for each line in it, so if I did this this one here, I would have gained three points for that shooting star, so I'll put three points here. Uh, now you're just going to do your bonus points and put them in here. So this one here, every time I did this bear constellation one, I would have got three points. And I'll place that in here. And some of these cards here, which are the your instantaneous cards, would have also gave you potentially bonus points at the end. But you'll add those all up, and the player with the most points at the end of the game is going to win. And that, in a nutshell, is going to be how you're going to play Look at the Stars. Now, there's a lot of these different bonus car, uh, cards in here. They're all explained at the end of the book. And for your first game, you're going to probably want to uh, definitely explain these bonus cards thoroughly before you start the game. All right, so let's go ahead back up to the table here, and I'll give you my final thoughts on Look at the Stars. <music> all right, that was Look at the stars by Panasaurus Games. The component quality in this game is phenomenal. I really like those player boards. Really thick cardboard, really nice surface. Dry erase works perfectly on them. I really love the chalk uh, markers. I think those are amazing. And the card quality for it's good. I really sort of wish that cards could be a little thicker, but they're perfectly fine. You're not actually playing like uh, a card game with them. You're just flipping them over to show. Uh, what constellations to draw and I really like those sort of like the bonus cards look really amazing in this game Overall gameplay of this game. It's going to be on the lighter end So this is going to be a family weight game and this is going to be a great game to play with friends and family in a large player count uh, I, The only reason I think it's eight players is because you only have eight boards that come with this If you brought two copies of this, I don't see any reason you couldn't play with 16 players so this could be a super huge player count game that plays in a really reasonable amount of time and it's a great flip and write. So basically if you're looking for a lighter weight, but not, you know, not too lightweight, this is still a, a good gaming game uh, and high player count and lots of engagement in the game because you're trying to get those constellations out, but you're not actually doing any player interaction. So you can have like a little sort of Zen game going. I would highly recommend checking out Look at the Stars. And that's my thoughts on it. Thank you for watching.